Good morning, y'all. Still at the same camp spot, and today is our last full day in Colorado. Uh, as we know. As we, have, we know. We have no idea what our plans are. We do know we are leaving here and going to Wyoming, but we don't know what, what we're doing there. <laughs> we have no idea. We need have to no look clue. at a map. We do. But we're going to enjoy this beautiful burrito Kelly made. She thinks she didn't make enough because she's starting to cut her potatoes a little bit smaller. And y'all know how we love our breakfast burritos. Mm -hmm. But usually I have, we have too much. When we last left you, it started raining a whole lot, especially when we were fishing last night, but it rained all day yesterday. You know, we put the bat wing awning up, canopies, you know, sopping wet, but it kept everything dry up under it. Worked out nicely and we're just gonna let all that dry. And because of that moisture, it's kind of chilly again. It's like cold, but- Well, it's just because it's dewy. There's moisture in the air. So when you're in the shade, it feels Obviously I have a sweater, I have two shirts on. But as the sun comes in, dries everything out and it's gonna suck all the moisture out of the ground and the air. So it's gonna be like a nice, beautiful, crisp day. And these are really good by the way. So we're gonna eat these and then we'll tell you what we're doing today. Those burritos were so good. I didn't do anything different. Well, only thing different I did was instead of Colby Jack cheese, I used Monterey Jack cheese. And then Cody just said it tasted totally different. I said the only other thing is there was some bacon grease left in the skillet. <laughs> well, maybe we should start putting bacon in it. I mean, good lord. So, I don't know, but it was so good. I wish we would have had like two more. But the plan for today is we do want to get another hike in. It's not going to be a long hike. I found a hike that's about four miles total. It's an out and back. It's in Winter Park, and I think it was Joe's Creek. Do you remember? Man, you were looking at it. I know where it is on the map. I can find it on the map, and I'll let you know the correct name of it. But it does go up in elevation, and it does follow a beautiful creek the entire way. So, it just sounds good. We just want to get out. We just want to hike. We just do something mm -hmm. but we don't want to kill ourselves because i think my ankles finally quit hurting from the big buyer's peak hike like two days ago my ankles finally stopped hurting which i know you guys said that i probably need um a mid boot to hike in totally agree with that i just don't have anywhere to put any other shoes at this point yeah <laughs> we can't get all the gear that we usually want because we're limited on space there would be a lot of stuff I'd like to have, mm -hmm. gear-wise. Especially on shoes, I do have two pairs of trail running, hiking shoes that are look like a tennis shoe. And the only reason I have two is because whenever I was struggling to get a pair last Christmas, nobody had anything in the store, so I had to order online. And I think I returned probably five pairs of shoes. And at that point, I was like, you know what? I'll just keep them. And then I finally found one in a store and I bought it. And I like the ones I kept too. Oh, and Cody got a new pair of shoes. I got some oboes. So he had oboes originally. Um, they were supposed to be, they don't call it waterproof. What do they call it? Water resistant? These are waterproof. The other ones were the water The other ones, resistance. they just had that Gore-Tex lining, which so, is supposed to prevent water. Anyways, we had a huge, I guess it was the hailstorm um, at our, our other primitive spot in Colorado. Yeah. And his feet got soaking wet. It took two days for the shoes to dry out. My and then they stunk. My feet were cold and pruny and they stunk and so And then bad. even after the shoes dried, they stunk smelt terrible so here they have a nice little store i think it's called the trailhead for outdoor gear climbing gear anything you need like that but they did have a new same brand but waterproof shoe and i was like let's just go ahead and get them because i'm keeping my other ones just to in case i need to do something it's, dirty yeah like real bad and my feet need it is okay to stink because mm -hmm. i can't the problem with these my feet i can't wear these probably in the summer in Arkansas because my feet will, I have really hot feet and they will start sweating. So anywhere where it's sinking. hot, yeah. but if it's hot and it's dry, then you can just wear chacos. chacos or flip flops or whatever. So but when we go, when we're around camp and I need to like be chopping wood or something and it's hot, I'll keep the other ones. And then Kelly can complain about how bad my feet smell when I get in the tent. It's fine. Well, if you, after you shower, you just put those on. Oh, good call. Good yeah. call. This has breathability and we got those so that I could breathe. And then the other reason we got, I go with oboes is because it's a wider end and it I is. have a caveman foot and my caveman foot spreads and I, all other shoes hold my caveman foot in like that and it hurts <laughs> and creates pressure in my arch. Yeah. So I need, I need my foot to spread like a caveman. Yeah. We both have very different feet. Mine are, I wouldn't say they're narrow, but they're almost a narrow foot and they're slender. But anyway, enough about shoes. We are going to finish drinking our coffee, do dishes, and then we can get ready to head out for a hike. All right, we're stretched, we did yoga. Everything's cleaned up here. We're gonna head to the trail. I don't have phone service, so I can't look up the name of the trail yet, but when we get there, I will definitely let you know. See you at the trailhead. 
we made it. It is Jim Creek Trail. Now it is 1.9 miles up, 1.9 back. We're only gonna gain 600 feet of elevation. Cody's gonna carry his fishing pole because this looks like it is a beautiful creek and it is such a beautiful sunny day. So I'm excited. I'm ready to do some walking. And I have on my other pair of trail running shoes I was telling you about. I don't know if you can, you can't see that. There you go. Those are La Sportivas and they are an Italian shoe to fit my slender foot. So we're going to see how they do today. I think I've only worn them on like short hiking trails. And then Cody has his other caveman foot <laughs> shoe. So this is an Ultra and it's the Lone Peak 5 and this is really light. It's designed for trail running and the reason I like it is it's a wide foot but then it also has a Arr! It's going to get you <laughs> aggressive uh, tread pattern and I like these for day hikes because I got a little bit stronger ankle than Kelly, I think. But we're ready to get on the trail. Look at this gorgeous view. We think we hear a waterfall. There's Do you a rock on a there. trip there? Yeah, there's a rock there. Cody just went on a trip without me. Oh, sorry, <laughs> darling. I hear something. I hear it, but I don't see it. I just see a bunch of weeds. Hold on, look at this, y'all. Is this not cool? This big chunk of granite with this in it? That is kind of cool. What's that about? Something folded that and it was a rock before the granite, I think. Or I could be wrong, but that's just me guessing. Cause it looks completely different. Like a, like this piece here looks like its own piece. Yeah. I yeah. could be wrong. Ooh. Okay, back to what we were doing. It sounds pretty big, whatever it is. It could just be a bunch of rabbits. Yeah. Ooh. Ew, this is wet. Stand right here. Let's see if it's worth it. Okay. I sent him to go find out things. So I think that right there, a little white water action, that's that's what we're hearing. But it's kind of thick back here. I'm not real sure. At first I thought this might have been a wildfire, 
But what I'm noticing is that there's no charred timber. None of this has burnt marks on it. I'm thinking it's a snow avalanche. That's the only thing I can think of. If I'm wrong, put it in the comments below, but we didn't see anything that uh, stated what we were gonna see on this trail besides waterfalls. Well, and usually if it's a wildfire, they'll say, you know, Jim Wilderness yeah. wildfire with the date year on it. But yeah, I'm not seeing any burnt char or anything. And so I'm just gonna base it off of Google Maps. I think, I don't know if we're gonna hike into the wilderness, but this would be Jim's Wilderness. And then Jim's Peak, I think is over here somewhere. Yeah, that's really pretty. And Kelly found this hike. You did such a good job, honey. Thank you. And it's getting pretty hairy right here. We got climbing. I mean, look how it's all uprooted. It had to have been an avalanche. Yeah, something. All the trees are laid over. What would be real bad for this area though, now that this is all down and starting to dry out, is if it became a wildfire, this stuff would go up like a Roman candle. But as <laughs> of right now, they've had so much rain here, it's unreal. I mean, you can tell the soil is so wet. I mean, at least every day for about an hour, you're gonna get a rainstorm. All right, so Hiking Project, which is the app that we use to find the trails, said that the trail ended back there, but... Probably a thousand yards back there. It looks like it keeps going, and there was a picture of a waterfall, which we have not come across yet. I guess so, we're gonna going. Maybe just a little ways, a little bit further. By the looks of the drop and how short, straight up in elevation we're going, we think we're getting close to the waterfall. We've got some waterfall lights in here. We're gonna keep on going. All right, y'all. Uh, so since our hiking project only had the first two miles of this trail, I'm using my Onyx off-road. Not only does that app show off-road trails for vehicles, but it also shows hiking trails. And I down, pre-downloaded this whole entire area and it showed the first two miles. Well, this section is an additional mile, total six miles, and we didn't plan for today for six miles. So I think we're just gonna call it here and go back because we should have started earlier. But you live, you learn, and the creek is beautiful. And we wanted to actually take you guys into town and take you to one more spot that we really have enjoyed. It's 1.30 right now. So we're gonna get off this trail. I'm glad we turned around because it's not looking good up there. That could be a huge downpour any minute. But we have finished all of our water in both of our water bottles and we're thirsty and we want some fresh mountain water. So Cody got his survivor filter filtration system out and he is pumping and filtering some fresh mountain water. I can't just wait. refill Kelly's in my bottle with this and it just reduces the amount of weight that I have to carry. Whenever I'm already carrying all the other stuff that I told you in the last hiking vlog. So instead of multiple bottles of water, we just carry the water filtration system, which is good for backpacking and hiking. And it's the same filtration system we have in our trailer. How good is it? <coughs> it's like, I'm really joking. It's like I drank water for the first time. I actually like coming up here just to drink water. Oh, so good. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all heard it. That's the only reason we do hikes is because we try to find the water and we just want to sit up here and drink water it's all day. It's so cold. It's like the perfect temperature. It's like you took it out of the refrigerator and it's so crisp, so clean. Mm. All right. Well, we better scoot because it's not looking good yeah, up there. Yeah, I guess there. I can't fish. Yeah, he thought he'd be able to go fishing, but... 
I'm kind of concerned about that cloud. Yeah, I don't... Mm. Oh, so we are not the only ones that read the trail. Well, nobody knew. Everybody, I guess, is either using the app or they read something else, but nobody else knew that this was gonna be a six miles round trip. So three miles there, three miles back. Everybody is turning around pretty much where we were at. And they're just like, eh, we didn't plan on it. So we're not the only ones. And we were like, yeah, did y'all even see that cloud up there? And they're like, no, we didn't. And they started running. And they're like, all right, see you later. <laughs> did we get everything? Yeah, I think. Are you I going for was... another trip? Yeah, about good. Double checking. <laughs> all right so we're going to take y'all to something i really really like and we'll see y'all there see you there Good evening. How do y'all got all cleaned up in the brewery that we went to, Hideaway Brewery. One of my favorites I've been to in a long time. Yeah, that, I would say that's our favorite brewery in Winter Park area. Winter Park area. And we went to quite a few and they were all good, but they know what they're doing there. And they're very excited to be doing what they're doing. So you know, if someone loves what they're doing, they're doing something right. They, or at least we hope they're doing something right. Yeah, you could tell that the passion was there in his job. That's always something to look for. And just like passion in your job, Kelly's passion is cooking. Angel Princess, what are you cooking tonight? Tonight I'm making beef bourguignon and I have not made it in a while, so I'm super excited. We've got the pressure cooker out. I'm doing some bacon right now. I went ahead and diced the bacon up so it's already basically crumbled. I'm just gonna fry it, the bacon, set it to the side. We're gonna sear the beef. I've got some stew meat here. So just gotta wait on the bacon and that goes aside and then we'll put the stew meat in and we'll sear it. And I only have one more sip of my mountain water. Oh no. I didn't drink a lot. I got a whole thing for it. I want one last sip of this and it smells like nothing. So amazing y'all, so amazing. Can we do that hike again? Uh, well, we're leaving tomorrow. We are leaving tomorrow. Hopefully to go somewhere really cool. And I say that that way because I have no clue where we're going. I know we're going to Wyoming, but we don't know where we're going to in Wyoming. We'll see how that turns out. Still waiting on the bacon. This is a really thick bacon. It's almost like Cody says Thanksgiving ham. So it's taking a minute to fry. While we're waiting, Cody and I were talking about some questions that we've seen in the comment section. One of them was, do we ever fight or argue? I'll let you take it away. Oh, I wouldn't say we fight or argue. I would just say we have strong disagreements and it's usually related to being extremely tired, hungry, hot, uh, and that's about it. Most of the time it's just like, we don't agree on something and we'll have a little bit of a, like, I don't agree with you. A and conversation. It, conversation, so to speak. So it kind of might sound to a person from the outside that we might be, you know, kind of mad at each other, but really we're just stating our facts, but we're stating those facts and we are in an uncomfortable situation. Wouldn't you have to say that? Which I would say living this lifestyle, uncomfortable situations do come more than you care to see, but we adapt, we overcome. And here we are, yeah. enjoying life, 100%. It's so true. For people that are new to the channel, we've been together since September 2006. of 2006. Yep. And in that whole entire time, we, I can't even really say we've had a real fight. We never go to bed angry. Yeah. And the key to our relationship communicate. is we communicate. We communicate about everything. If we do have one of those dis disagreements, we don't just sit there and stew over it. And it's been this way before this lifestyle. We just talk it out, immediately talk it out. Oh that no, I just realized I left two pieces of bacon. <laughs> too late, it's gonna take too long. That's the whole key is we communicate. And for any relationship, we feel like that is probably one of the best things that you can do. Now, when Kelly and I spend more time together, it sounds strange, We 
we it's more difficult for us to separate but during tax season when i was a tax accountant i would spend tax season you know a lot of hours away from kelly and i would come back and she would say what would you say well i had my own routine like i was home by myself most of the winter so i had my own routine when i got home and then we'd have to get back on each other's schedule and then we got to the point again where we couldn't help but want to be around each other all the time so after a couple of tax seasons of that that's when we started realizing that we wanted to find a way to spend time together all the time every waking moment, every waking moment. actually right now is every waking moment while my beef is cooking, I have a onion that I am dicing. So the meat's almost done. I'm gonna add in the bacon in a minute. Let me go chop this up a little more. So I'm gonna add back in my bacon. We're gonna do salt. And we love pepper. Okay. Mix that up. Okay, now we're gonna add some flour. What the flour's gonna do, it's gonna help thicken up everything in the pressure cooker. I have found it easier not to remove the flour container. I'm actually gonna transfer all of this here into our pressure cooker. So what I'm doing is I'm going to cook everything, pre-cook it here, add it to the pressure cooker. The pressure cooker is just gonna help uh, tenderize the meat and lock in all the flavor. Now we need to get ready to do our vegetables. I need you to help me. I need to get the skin off here. Oh, okay. We'll yeah. just peel these bad boys. Yeah. And if y'all notice right now, the meal that we're cooking, this is the real true reason we wanted to get back from the hikes early is because Kelly wanted to cook this meal and hang around a campfire before we head out tomorrow. Because our campfire looks like it's going out. Yeah, I need to throw some wood on it. I'll do it if you can just keep that. peeling. Yes, ma'am, on it. I just threw my onion in. I'm gonna let those cook. While that is cooking, we have our carrot and I'm going to slice that. So Kelly just added the carrots in with the onions. I had to come over here and man it because they seemed like they were boiling, she said. Yeah, the burner sounded like it was boiling. So we're gonna add carrots in, let those cook a little bit. Now Kelly is going to be knocking out some garlic. Have y'all ever eaten a raw garlic? It will burn your tongue. It's pretty powerful stuff. I've I had to do it once. I was just curious because I'd never had raw garlic before and my breath didn't smell that great afterwards. My fingers, I'm going to tell you, consistently smell like garlic. I'm not lying because I probably use garlic every day. I know whenever I worked at Olive Garden, I smelled like uh, the free bread sticks that everybody got. <laughs> Maybe that's what drew me to you. What drew me to you was the free bread stick smell. I was like, God, I've got to be with this guy, man. Breadsticks. Let's go ahead and add this garlic in. Looking good. These are about to go into the pot there. We're going to add a cup of wine to the pressure cooker. Now we're not going to drink this wine, Cody. We're going to save it. <laughs> He was like, oh my God, we have wine. I was like, we'll save that for our Italian dish. We also have some beef stock. We're gonna do two cups of the stock. All right. And that. Also need, while I'm in the fridge, the beef of bouillon. So I love beef of bouillon. I love vegetable of bouillon. So we're gonna add that. I'm just gonna do a big old heaping tablespoon. I have some tomato paste. Ooh, that's fresh. It is fresh. So we're gonna squirt some of that in there. Also what goes in there is some herbs, which we have thyme, which I don't really chop thyme. I'm gonna take a few over here. What we're gonna do is go backwards to the stem and you get all the little morsels off of there. And we have some parsley, good Lord. Parsley's been in that fridge for a while, so I'm oh, thankful it looks the way it does, which I don't need much. Now, if you don't have fresh herbs in your kitchen and you're like, I've got everything but the fresh herbs, you can use dried herbs. It's 
not a big deal at all. I've done the same thing in my kitchen when we had a house. I did the same thing. Here they go. And now it's time to put the pressure cooker to work. So we're gonna put the lid on like this. Make sure it's aligned on both sides with the latches. Take this bad boy, get one latch over there, get the other latch right there, and then we'll screw it down. And this is what keeps the lid on. There we go. Now these two pieces here will release steam so it doesn't get overly pressured. This is just a handle for the lid. This little red fella there is an emergency pressure release valve and we've never seen that go off, luckily. And I think I'm gonna time it for like 20 minutes. I do not wanna start my timer until I hear steam coming out of here. I haven't even started the burner yet, the flame. The, sorry, this one jacked up, there we go. This is the burner I spilled milk on. She didn't really spill milk. She was making cream of wheat it and put milk over. in it and the milk boiled over and it's been acting weird ever since. I am dicing potatoes because I'm making mashed potatoes. Just for Cody and I, I did three potatoes. I think that will be enough from my calculations. We have our potatoes and there's a little bit of parsley in there from the knife, which, hey, that's flavor. Add some of our filtered water, just enough to cover the potatoes and we're gonna set it on boil. And this started steaming, so I started my timer on that for 20 minutes. I have three minutes until the beef bourguignon is done. So I'm slicing up some mushroom. The mushroom is going to go in after, but we're going to boil the mushroom in the bourguignon for about three minutes, just until the mushroom gets soft. If you want, you can also saute the mushroom, which I might saute the mushroom in butter because that's more flavorful. That only has, oh, my timer's going off. Now to easily, quickly get these to release so I can check it, I'm gonna use the oven mitt and pull it. I can't get it. This is a lot like whenever you uh, smoke meat or something. You just want to, you don't want to uh, constantly check stuff because then it won't cook efficiently. So you just go with it and you don't check it till you think it's almost done. I feel like my timer limit is initially 20 minutes. And if I need more time, like I said, I can boil it with the mushrooms. Or I could just go ahead and just do it again. Like I've done it with my uh, spaghetti sauce. I've just put the pressure lid back on, started it back up and pressure cooked it for 10 minutes. Just wait for the steam to come out, go again for 10 minutes. So how's it looking? All right. Wow. So I think, what do you think? Uh, I think it looks good. I think we should go a little bit longer. You think so? Yeah. You, you want pressure? I think 10 minutes. All right, 10 minutes it is.
added butter and salt, pepper, and milk to my mashed potatoes. They're still kind of chunky, so I'm trying to get that going. And I added my mushrooms to this, and I have it boiling. We're gonna let that go till it thickens up to our heart's desire. We're ready to eat. I just added more salt and pepper to our potatoes. They're a little chunky because I don't have my KitchenAid mixer. I'm just working with what I have. I would love for them to be more smooth, but they're creamy and they're yummy. Here's what we do. And they're buttery. There's a whole stick of butter in there, y'all. Ooh. There it is. Oh gosh, that looks so good. Look at that, y'all. That looks so good. That is what dreams are made of. And then we want to add more pepper because you just never know. All right, ready to eat. I'm so hungry. That beef is pretty good too. Yeah. Kelly really outdid herself with that dish. It was good. It was good. But tomorrow we're leaving. Have no clue where we're heading. And we'll catch you on the other. See you in the next spot.